Welcome back, everyone, or welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Rob, and today we're going to be doing a full roast review on the Roost L100 Plus. It's a sample roaster made by Roost. I've roasted probably 120 to like 150 batches on it so far. So I'm going to share some things that I like about it, some things that I really don't like about it. And then, uh, yeah, I am not sponsored or anything by Roost. Uh, I don't get paid or anything by them. So this is just my honest review of this product. They did send this unit to me for free. So um, I did not pay for it. So a few months ago, I created a first impressions type video. I went into the features of the machine and stuff like that. Today, we're just going to kind of focus on more of a complete roast walkthrough. The Roost L100 Plus can roast anywhere from 50 to 200 grams of coffee. You just need to create a profile for each batch size. Um, so if you're doing 50 grams, you need to have a, a profile that's tailored towards that 50 grams versus one that's tailored towards 200 grams. So anyway, with that being said, let's start roasting. First thing you wanna do is turn your roaster on. They got a little button in the back. You push it up, boom, roaster comes on. Now, if it's your first time, your roaster's probably gonna need to update with Wi-Fi and everything like that. You'll have to go in there and get it set up. It may take a minute or two, so you know, just let it do its update. Uh, go ahead and get it set up to the device you're gonna be monitoring with. Now, you don't have to use a device to, to run the machine. You can just manually roll with it. You don't have to hook it up to anything. But if you do wanna track and chart stuff, you do need to hook it up to a phone or a laptop, computer or something like that. You have to set the machine up via a third-party app, which I talked about in my last video, called Particle. Cat, who is also a coffee roaster YouTuber, uh, has a great video on basically setting the machine up with this Particle app. I would highly suggest going and watching that one. There's no point in really regurgitating everything she said and did. So uh, I'll link that video down in the description below. If you're having trouble setting up the machine, go watch it. She does a pretty good little walkthrough and basically explains how to set the machine up. That is actually the video that helped me get my machine set up, so thank you, Kat. So once all that's complete, the setup's done, you got everything hooked up to your computer, you wanna choose what roast profile you're roasting to. You can go to roast settings. Uh, it's basically touch screen, so you just touch where you wanna go. Go to profiles. You can download five profiles into your Roost uh, that may change later down the road. Uh, like again, they can push out updates, so I don't know, they may leave it at five. Um, basically, you choose whatever profile you wanna do. We're doing a 200 gram profile that I use. So everything's set up. It has up there ready to charge, she's ready to go. All these profiles are shareable, so you can go in and share it with somebody. You can go in and download some from the Roost portal. You can create a complete profile from scratch if you want to do that you can go in there and just from the ground up create whatever you want to do you can also edit other people's profiles so if somebody sends you one and you want to change things up a little bit you can do all that so on your profiles you change your profile on the computer and then you go and you download it into your machine you just click download takes like five seconds and then you know your, your machine's ready with the new data you just gave it you want to move this handle from the up position to the down position, that's gonna start heating up your machine. I've already heated it up a little bit because I wanted to, I didn't wanna wait 10 minutes, you know, while we're doing the video to let the machine heat up. So I usually let it heat up for about 10 minutes or so uh, before I start roasting. Usually when I get in, I turn it on, get it heated up. Usually that's about 10 minutes or so of stuff that I need to do before I drop a batch of coffee in. So while it's heating up and everything like that, I'll measure out my coffee, 200 grams of coffee for this profile we're gonna be using. Bam. We're doing a little Colombian coffee from Toledo, La Batega. This is actually a coffee that Community Coffee, uh, the owner of Community Coffee, uh, his family owns it. It's a, it's a huge company down here in Louisiana. He gave me some of this coffee. So we're going to be roasting some of it up. Super cool. Mr. Matt Siraj. Super nice guy. Met him here a while back. Nice dude. Anyway. So once it's ready, we'll go ahead and we'll charge the beans. Once the chamber handle comes up, it automatically triggers the graph to go ahead and start doing its thing, starts tracking. So at this point, you can really just kind of sit back and read a book like Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Uh, nothing really pairs better with coffee and coffee roasting and stuff like that than reading some dang good books. Or also during this time, you can, you know, cup some coffee, do whatever you need to do. If you want to check out your previous roast and compare it to how this one's doing, you can kind of do that. If for some reason you want to get a little crazy and take it manual, all you got to do is click on whatever you want to change 
and then you can change this little knob up here this is the development time at the end where I want it to drop so we'll just change that now to say you know minute 30 so a minute 30 after uh, first crack which first crack I got set up after the fifth crack so once I hear the fifth crack that's when my time starts ticking so this will just automatically drop now you can go in here and change the drum speed you can change whatever you want uh, just go in there and override whatever it's manual it's it's automatically doing you can override and manually do it turn up the heat whatever you need to do so while it's doing its thing let's go ahead and uh, discuss the roaster real quick do I like it yes I am enjoying the ever-living hell out of it the amount of data and stuff that I can get from this machine is is literally insane I've never really had a machine that could track the how many cracks that it's calculating and then actually graph it the adjustability of it is really nice I mean you can change everything from the exhaust temp to drum speed to anything you want to change in between and I like it because if you're really trying to understand how like naturals versus wash coffees or a pea berry versus you know just like normal coffee you can kind of see it in these graphs pretty good as far as like how things are differing from coffee to coffee second have I had any issues with the machine first of all I did not like the particle setup in the very beginning getting it hooked up to like Wi-Fi I'm a country dude from the south and it literally took every ounce of my public school education to figure it out so thanks again cat uh, your video really helped me out you're clearly a lot more intelligent than I am another thing about the roaster is it needs a strong Wi-Fi signal um, I've had a few times like I'm up op I'm operating on Wi-Fi right now but sometimes during the day if the Wi-Fi is getting pulled from the shop because I actually steal from my machine shop over there if it's getting pulled from the shop then I won't be able to use the Wi-Fi signal because it'll be too weak now I can use my phone as a hotspot and still operate it but like the Akawa, I never have an issue with it as far as um, the Wi-Fi being too too weak in here. So uh, you do need a, a stronger signal, I feel, with the uh, Roost. It's irritated me a little bit, but I mean, that's more just I need to get Wi-Fi for my building. I did have an instance where the beans would get, were getting stuck in the exhaust area, but then I realized that I had my RPM set way too high. So uh, I contacted Tron, and he basically told me my RPMs are way too high, so turn them down. Once I turn them down to around 42, I haven't had any issues with that or anything like that. So just know that if you're getting crazy with the RPMs, it may it may fling them up a little higher than they're supposed to go, you know. So, hey, it happens. Other than that, I haven't really had any issues. I mean, this thing's built like a tank. I'm not going to lie to you. It's heavy, and I have taken the top off. Uh because I was cleaning out that little exhaust area and it's very meticulously put together inside. I, I was actually very impressed with how, with how the inside looks. It's, uh, it's really neat. So another question I get a lot is would I recommend it? Recommending a product like this is kind of hard because I feel it really depends on the person. You got to be 100% dedicated to coffee. You got to be 100% dedicated that what you're wanting to do with the business or anything like that, like you're not wishy-washy. It's an expensive machine and once you make this investment, you need to make sure it makes business sense for what you're trying to do. So we're past first crack. We're coming up on... Uh, almost coming up on eight minutes of roasting time we're going to drop here in about 30 seconds and you're going to see it's just going to fill up this tray uh, right now we're got about 82 or 84 cracks total what i like is you can actually see this little crack graph just going up and you'll see the cracks kind of peaking and once they kind of plateau out it's just a cool little graph to see because you can kind of see about how long you have this range of coffee just really in that crack mode you know because like when you're in that crack so anyway we just dropped there dropped around 403 degrees fahrenheit the cooling tray is automatically on so as soon as they hit it's starting to cool the beans down usually it takes like two to three minutes it's pretty quick so once it's dropped you can go ahead and start another batch they have a between batch protocol you can set up which is another kind of like profile that it'll do real quick and it'll take your machine back to the exact temp every time and then once you hit that exact temp you go ahead, pour more beans in and start going. We could start roasting right now if we wanted to while these are cooling. You don't have to wait for these to cool and then put more beans in. So what's nice is like, you know, if you got a eight minute and 30 second roast and then you have a 30 second between batch protocol, I mean, you're looking at putting a coffee in the chamber every nine minutes. So that's one of them things like you can roast a lot of coffee in a machine like this. I like that it has the automatic drop because there are some times, you know, when you're out there, your kiddos done broke something and you're out there regulating you know handling some business and all of a sudden you realize that you were roasting coffee and you run back in 
it's perfectly dropped everything's cooling down you haven't messed up anything I mean that's service with a smile you know what I mean now once the beans drop and you want to go over here you can set your weight of what you charged with you can measure this out see what it weighs now you can go in there and put the color of it give it some descriptions or whatever add some comments to the roast or anything like that any of that data can kind of be added and collected then in, in the portal so I like that they also have a little cupping tab up there so you can attach this profile to that cupping when you do it super cool super cool one last question while we're letting it cool off is what would I like to see from roost uh, going forward I know they have the p3000 coming out which is I think a three kilogram machine I'm thinking it's going to be towards the end of the year from what I'm kind of been reading on their website and stuff I'm going to talk to Tron this week so maybe I'll get some more information and I'll release that in, in the next video but um I can't wait to see how that kind of works and pairs up with the uh, roost l100 plus see if it's kind of the same as far as like the data collection and everything like that I can only imagine it will be um, I don't see roost venturing into the home roasting market too much because I think this high-end micro roaster climate seems to be on the rise and the problem with home roasting for a company like roost is they got to hit a certain amount of demand for the economies of scale to go down enough to make the machines cheap enough and they even say it on their website that their focus is quality and they're really not focused on price, which you, I mean, you get, I mean, it's a 75 to $7,800 machine, taxes and shipping and everything like that. So you're paying a pretty good bit for it. With that being said, you can go ahead, if you're done roasting, all you gotta do is flip this little handle back up. It starts cooling down the machine. I usually let the uh, inlet temperature get down to below 100 before I turn it off. Um, I let the fans go ahead and do their thing. Uh, cool the machine down opening this does not mean that hot air is blowing down into your coffee this is still cool right here that that air coming through the uh, bean chamber I will say I love the heck out of this little machine I roast on it multiple times a week the ease and adjustability of this unit is literally just insane I'm currently working on a roost versus a Kawa video now uh, I'm gonna have it coming out pretty soon I want to kind of explain the differences in them which one's better at certain things and stuff like that so for the coffee giveaway I'm giving away three bags of Papua New Guinea it's this new coffee I got coming I'm gonna have it here in about a week or so it's a Papua New Guinea it's a Western Highland which you don't see too many Western you see a lot of Eastern but you don't see too many Western Highland coffees it's a natural aerobic fermentation 16 hour pulp natural just a fruit bomb I mean this thing's good dude it's actually the one I had in, that, in my last video amazing coffee I'm gonna roast it here on the roost so leave a comment below with Papua New Guinea and then also subscribe to the channel and I'll pick three subscribers a week after this video is released and I will reach out to you and basically give you a bag of coffee of this Papua New Guinea goodness. If you want to go check out the roost, go check out the roost. I'll have it linked in the description below. Again, I'm not sponsored. I don't make any money off of them. So just at your free will, go do what you need to do. You know what I mean? Anyway, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching my video and hanging out with me and I will see y'all next week. Later. I used to wake up feeling real stressed. Now I wake up feeling real blessed.